welcome to this video lecture on gas properties and Avogadro's hypothesis having to do with how ideal gases behave. We're going to start by considering the four balloons that you see here. Each one has a different gas, helium, oxygen, water, and ammonia. And what we can see here is that the volumes of these four balloons are essentially the same volume. They're all in the same room together and they have been for some time, so we can assume that the pressure and temperature of the balloons are all the same. Okay, so we have a temperature listed here at 23.9 degrees Celsius and we have a pressure here of 100.9 kPa. So the, the actual temperature and pressure don't really matter. We just know that these four balloons uh, contain different gases and each one of those gases is at the same volume, at the same pressure, and the same temperature. Knowing that is all true, we're asking the question, how do the number of particles in each balloon compare? Well, if you spend some time counting each one of these, you're gonna find that there's 20 particles of helium in here. Those are 20 atoms of helium. If you spend some time counting, you're going to count 20 molecules of oxygen. You're gonna find 20 molecules of water and you're gonna find 20 molecules of ammonia. So they all contain the same number. In this case, it's 20. So Avogadro's hypothesis says that if you have equal volumes of different gases, and if those gases have the same pressure and temperature, then those gases will have the same number of particles. So that right there is what is considered Avogadro's hypothesis. This is the basis for the equality. One mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure is equal to 22.4 liters. And so really, the, this volume, it's called the molar volume, it's the volume of a mole of a gas, 22.4 liters, at STP is going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles, irregardless of what gas is present. And that's what's pretty cool about this. So let's talk about um, ideal gases and how they behave. And we're going to try to explain ideal gas behavior based on how those molecules are moving and how they are interacting. So the kinetic molecular theory says that gases are made up of molecules that are very small and they are very far apart. It also says that gas particles don't lose their energy when they hit, when they hit the container walls. Um, what this really means is that gases have perfectly elastic collisions. This is different from um, large scale. If you were to hit some billiard balls on a pool table, right? When those billiard balls hit each other, they definitely slow down. Those are not elastic collisions. We are talking about on the molecular level, these gas particles don't lose their energy when they hit the container walls and we, they are said to have elastic collisions. Gas particles are, are traveling in a straight line uh, like, for example, if you were to fire a gun, the bullet would start out straight, but eventually it would fall, right? So that's not a straight line. But gas particles will travel in a straight line. They won't um, interact with, um, they won't be pulled by gravity or by any other forces. Gas particles move faster when they are hotter. A gas at 400 Kelvin is going to be moving twice as fast as a gas at 200 Kelvin. So twice the kinetic, twice the Kelvin temperature is twice the kinetic energy. And ideal gases are, are said to have no attractive forces between them. Okay, let's take a look at this next example, which we're going to continue to try to explain what's going on with the particles. Okay. So 
comparing an ideal gas. You know, we keep talking about the ideal gas behavior. So any gas can be an ideal gas um, if it's subjected to the ideal conditions. But really it's all about what's called intermolecular attractive forces. And we're gonna abbreviate that as IMAF, intermolecular attractive forces. We are um, trying to minimize those attractive forces in order for a gas to behave as ideally as possible. So with that, in short, an ideal gas will have minimal to no intermolecular attractive forces. So if we have two gas samples at the same pressure, and we're picturing here an ideal gas versus a real gas. So in an ideal gas, there are no or none intermolecular attractive forces, there are none. Um, in a real gas, well, those attractive forces actually do exist because gas particles actually do have um, mass and anything that has mass is going to have attractive forces. So in a real, real gas, real gases will have um, intermolecular attractive forces. So what happens in, in an ideal gas, none of these particles will be attracting one another. But in reality, real gases do have attractions with one another. And you can see here that if they do have attractions with one another, they're going to pull each other closer. And this results in uh, a volume that is smaller than what that volume would be if the gas had no intermolecular attractive forces. So with intermolecular attractive forces, gases would result in having a smaller volume. Um, so now let's take a look at that same gas uh, subjected to the same volume. We've got two different gas samples at the same volume. Ideal gas on the left, so there are no intermolecular attractive forces, assuming it's ideal. Real gas um, does have intermolecular attractive forces. And so what we see here, um, without the intermolecular attractive forces, these particles are allowed to hit the walls of the container um, with a certain force. When we have those intermolecular attractive forces um, taking place, that is going to basically reduce the pressure because the molecules are attracting each other, which softens the blow of the particles hitting the walls of the container. So in a real gas, the attractive, having those attractive forces results in the gas having reduced pressure than if it was truly behaving ideally. So um, just to give you an idea of what, what we're talking about when we say ideal gas versus a real gas, we are going to be uh, dealing with gases that are in ideal conditions for uh, the scope and the sequence of this course. Okay, what you would need to know is uh, what conditions will make the gas behave as ideally as possible. And these are the conditions that keep the molecules as far apart as possible, because if they're far apart, they're going to have the smallest amount of effect on each other. So what can we do to make sure gases behave as ideally as possible? Well, if we are using the smallest molecules pos possible. So if the gas is made up of the smallest molecules or atoms, so really particles, the smallest particles, let's go with that. Uh, for example, hydrogen and helium, those are the smallest particles that exist in gas form. Um, these will have the lowest intermolecular attractive forces because they are very, very small and don't exert much force on each other. The other thing we can do is less inherent to the particle, but we can subject those gases to different conditions. We can subject the gas to high temperatures. And when we do that, we are making those particles move very, very, very fast. If you're making those particles move very, very fast, then if particles do come near each other, they will be moving too fast to have any real attractive force between them. The other thing we can do 
to a gas to ensure that the particles are as far apart as possible, subject them to low pressure. With low pressure, we can allow those particles to spread out. And if they are spreading out, they are far apart from each other and they're not really going to be exerting those intermolecular attractive forces. So conveniently for us in this course, under conditions of standard temperature and pressure, most gases are going to behave as ideal gases. So really from this point forward, gases are going to behave ideally. Um, and what that really just means is that the math is going to be simple. And for this course, simple is good. Uh, STP, we've mentioned that a few times. STP stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure. Uh, there is a reference table, reference table A. This is on page one of your chemistry reference tables. Standard pressure in KPA is 101.3 kilopascals. If we're measuring it in atmospheres, it would be one atmosphere. Uh, we've also used 760 millimeters of mercury. That is also just a different unit, um, that it, but it is still standard pressure, just in a different unit. And standard temperature is either 273 Kelvin or zero degrees Celsius. And um, yeah, so those are standard temperatures and pressures. We're going to assume that all gases are behaving ideally. Um, and at this point, they're all going to be at standard temperature and pressure. We'll get to a section in a little bit in this, in this course where we're talking about non-STP conditions. All right, switching gears a little bit. We are going to try to look at relationships between variables of pressure, temperature, and volume of a gas. Okay. And so they all have names, and I really, it's not important that you know the names, but we will be referring to the names of these relationships um, just as a shortcut. So the first one we're going to talk about is Boyle's Law, and it relates pressure of a gas with the volume of the gas. What's going to be staying constant when we talk about pressure and volume and how they're related is temperature. We're going to keep the temperature the same. We're not going to let the gas heat up or cool down. And we're also going to keep the number of particles constant. So we're not going to let any gas escape, and we're not going to introduce any new gas into the sample. Uh, so in this particular um, relationship between pressure and volume, as you increase, well, let's see, we're going to have volume over here and pressure over here. So, uh, and hopefully in class I'll be able to show you these uh, uh, in person, uh, but hard to do it on the, on the video lesson. Okay, so the relationship here is as you increase the volume okay so as you increase the volume so high volume what that is going to be is low pressure and with if you have a syringe where you have uh, low volume you're going to have high pressure and it turns out that it's not quite a linear relationship it looks like that so we can say here that as you increase the volume of a, uh, of a gas, you decrease the pressure of a gas. Okay. Um, this is known as an inverse or an indirect relationship. And the kinetic molecular theory explainer here is that when you have more space, with that increased volume, you have more space for particles. And what that means is that the collisions of the particles are less frequent and they are less forceful. So with more space, so more volume, there's more space, the collisions of the particles are less frequent, less forceful, and what that means is lower pressure. Charles Law relates volume and temperature. And so what is going to stay constant here is the gas pressure. We're going to keep the pressure the same, and we're going to keep the number of particles constant. We're not going to let gas in, we're not going to let gas out. 
This relationship is when you have, um, it's going to be a direct relationship. As you increase the temperature of a gas, you will increase the volume of a gas. This is known as a direct relationship. And the kinetic molecular theory explainer is that when you increase the temperature, you uh, are increase um, with increasing kinetic energy. So when you increase the temperature, the particles are going to move faster, and that means kinetic energy is going to be faster. Okay, what that means is that the particles are going to need more space to keep the collisions or to keep the collision force constant. Okay, so let's think about that again. Remember, we've got pressure staying constant, so we have to keep our collision force constant. But with an increasing temperature, you're increasing the kinetic energy, you're speeding up the particles. We're going to need to give them more space so that those collision force stays constant. Okay, and so increasing kinetic energy is increasing temperature. That's going to need more space. That's more volume. So that's that explanation right there. The next relationship is named after a scientist, Hugh Sack. Uh, pressure versus temperature. What's going to stay constant here is volume, and the number of particles are going to remain constant. Uh, we are going to have a graphical relationship that is going to look like this, which means that when you increase the temperature of the gas, you will increase the pressure of the gas. So again, this is a direct relationship. The explainer here, with that increased temperature, there is increased kinetic energy, right? So those particles are going to be moving faster. And what will happen is with the increased kinetic energy, the particles' collisions will be more frequent and more forceful, right? And so higher temperature, increased kinetic energy is increased temperature. That's going to make the pressure, those collisions, the frequency and the force of the collisions is going to be greater, so there's a greater pressure. All right, lastly, we're returning back to Avogadro, which relates volume of a gas versus the number of particles. So in this case, what's going to stay constant is the temperature of the gas and the pressure. And so we're going to have the number of particles here. We're going to have the volume here. And this just basically says, this is also going to be direct, with an increased number of particles, you're going to have an increased volume. Right? So, uh, and of course, this is also a direct relationship. This is probably the easiest one to understand. As you are blowing up a balloon... You are adding more particles to the balloon. That makes the volume get bigger, right? So the kinetic molecular theory explainer here is that you're going to, as you add more particles, more space is needed, right? More space is needed. That's going to be the increased volume to maintain the collision force to maintain the collision force as as uh, a constant right because we said pressure's got to stay constant so if you're going to add more particles if you're going to keep but want to keep the pressure the same you're going to have to give those particles more space so that when they do hit uh, the walls of the container uh, it'll be with the same amount of force that you had before all right, so in this lesson, we have learned about um, Avogadro's hypothesis, which says you have equal volumes of different gases. Those gases also have the same pressure and temperature. That means they're going to have the same number of particles. We then attempted to explain, we then attempted to explain, um, so we started out talking about the balloons. We then talked about ideal gas behavior. And then we attempted to use 
that idea of kinetic molecular theory to explain the relationships of a pressure, a volume, and the temperature of an ideal gas. All right, everybody, thanks so much. We'll see you back in the classroom.